and I want to um, I want to talk about an early civil and human rights uh, leader who knew the struggle for justice and equality really well, and this is the lawyer, advocate, scholar, priest, and poet, the Reverend Dr. Polly Murray. Um, some may know Polly Murray's background. If not, I, I highly recommend her autobiography. She grew up in North Carolina, uh, a woman of both African and European ancestry. She describes in her autobiography how she was descended from slave owning and enslaved people, how she faced repeated discrimination based on her race, based on her sex, uh, presumably based on her, her um, sexual orientation and her gender expression as well. So she was reject rejected from graduate school at UNC explicitly based on her race. She was later uh, rejected from a Harvard fellowship that she had earned explicitly because she was a woman. And history for a while neglected her formidable legacy. But her contributions are striking. She was actually responsible for the legal argument uh, used in the Brown versus Board of Education um, case uh, to uh, where the Supreme Court overturned racial segregation in public education. She was also the mastermind behind there we go. The mastermind behind um, the legal work that Ruth Bader Ginsburg did in order to uh, secure a measure of equal protection um, for women under the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. And um, uh, Ginsburg uh, credited Murray in some of her early briefs, um, even though Murray wasn't on the case, but she was responsible for those theories. Polly Murray was also among the first class of women officially ordained by the Episcopal Church. And the point I want to make about Murray's thought in particular is that uh, she continually stressed the interrelated nature of all forms of oppression. So she was known for insisting that sex and race-based discrimination are both morally indefensible and that all people's rights are equal. So she said the rights of women and the rights of African-Americans are different phases of a fundamental indivisible issue of human rights. And as a consequence, she insisted that movements for liberation should work together. She was uh, disappointed in civil rights leaders for failing to recognize women's leadership, presumably her own. And she was similarly disappointed in a women's movement that overlooked the needs and the priorities of black and poor women. So long before intersectionality was theorized in those terms, uh, Murray was trying to get attention to the important idea that, um, uh, that it's necessary to look at an array of dimensions across which uh, individuals face oppression, discrimination, marginalization. And if you think about it, Murray's conviction about the interrelated nature of human rights, it very much triumphs on the world stage with the adoption of the Universal Declaration in 1948. Now, I won't review things that, that I've already said today, but I do want to stress the principles of equality and non-discrimination that are reflected in the Universal Declaration. So Article I famously says, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And in particular, if you think about the historical context in 1948, I mean, these were aspirational statements, certainly in the US, if one considers uh, the Jim Crow laws of that era, 
Uh, and they were aspirational statements. Um, when one thinks about sex discrimination, which wouldn't be outlawed at the Supreme Court until the early 70s. The Universal Declaration talks about non-discrimination. And I wanted to share this language from Article 2. So it's talking about everyone being entitled to all the rights and freedoms without distinction of any kind. So we see here how human rights provides a systematic overarching framework that unites particular movements for justice, liberation, inclusion, equality. It unites them through a common set of organizing principles, equality and non-discrimination, which are essential in order to enable us to address various issues in a consistent and principled way. So there is this idea that all people are to enjoy human rights. No one is to be excluded or to suffer discrimination on the basis of any factor or criteria. 